Hi, I'm Liam Spradlin, a designer and senior design advocate on material design. And I'm Ivy Knight, a designer and advocate for material design. In this workshop, we're going to learn a little bit about variable fonts, how you can use them for custom, expressive, legible type, how to apply that type to your designs, and how to implement variable fonts with Google Fonts and CSS. We'll be building on some existing knowledge of foundational design principles, so we recommend a familiarity with type scales using Figma and some light HTML and CSS. Let's get started. To get started, you need to access the Design Lab Figma file. Navigate to the Migrating to Variable Fonts file or search for Migrating to Variable Fonts within the Figma community. You can click on Duplicate in the top right corner of any file to duplicate into your own files. So here we have the file duplicated. Before getting started, we need to make sure we have a variable font. This file uses Roboto Flex. You can download it from fonts.google.com if it's not available. With the Figma file set up and we have a variable font ready, what are variable fonts? Well, variable fonts are a new innovative font format that lets users gain control over their type and icons. Roboto Serif and Roboto Flex are new typefaces made fresh for variable font technology, each with a wide range of axes. We're no longer limited to older, hard set styles such as regular, bold, italic, etc. The variables within variable fonts are controlled by axes or instances. If we choose, any variable in the type design can be assigned to a user controllable axis. Variable fonts lets you deliver multiple styles in a single font file, making websites more sustainable, smaller, and faster, and giving the designer greater expressive control. So let's walk through all the parameters or axes we have available and their effect. So here, we'll select the type to the right and open the type details modal to open the axis sliders. So first, weight. Weight defines the thickness of a letter and provides a full continuous range of stroke thicknesses. Second, width. Width is the result of how much horizontal space is taken up by the typeface's character. Third, adjust the style from upright to slanted. Also known to the typographers as oblique style, though rare slant can work in the other direction, which is called a back slanted or reverse oblique style. Next, grade. Grade is a secondary modifier of the optical weight of a typeface and is independent of the weight axis. Both weight and grade affect a letter's thickness, but adjustments with grade are more granular. And last, optical style. Adapt the style to the specific text sizes specified in points. At smaller sizes, letters typically become optimized for more legibility, with loose spacing kerning and thicker strokes with less detail. At larger sizes, letters are typically optimized for headlines with thinner strokes and more detailed forms, and more extreme weights and widths. If you work with a brand style guide, you may have an established type scale to inform typographic constraints. Using variable fonts does not mean tossing this consistency aside. It gives further refinement within the type scale flexibility for use cases like increasing weight on grade on dark backgrounds within a single file. While a type scale can consist of more than one font family, here we'll only want to customize a condensed version of the material default type scale. Let's start by customizing the type scale with the body copy. So here I have the type scale set up in a condensed version to have one for each font category. So let's set the site's base type size first and optically adjust from there. The default for body large is 18 points. Let's set it to 18 points and set to Roboto Flex. Right now it's at Roboto. Adjusting for greater legibility used to mean updating the font size and weight, which meant another font file. But now we can fine tune some of the axes. Adjust optical size, grade, and weight. 
So we'll open up our type settings. Should adjust the grade a little bit and the weight. And the optical size. Continue with label. Well, labels are more utilitarian and used in a shorter, smaller context like buttons. Optically, adjust the grade to allow the label to appear correctly on button containers and chips. So again, we'll need to set this to Roboto Flex. And then let's adjust the grade some. So now we'll keep refining the title, headline, and display. All three are used for shorter, medium to high emphasis text, like page titles and sections. Headline and display can be more expressive because of their size and high emphasis. Feel free to play around with all of the axes here. So we'll select all three and make sure they are using Roboto Flex. And then let's play around with some of our parameters here. I want my headline and my display to be much more bold. So I'll do this and really stand out. Title will probably still be amongst body copy, so it will keep it a little bit more condensed. Okay, so here's our new type scale. With each of the type selected, we can actually add these into our Figma files as styles so that they are then reusable in the rest of our design so we don't have to set all of the settings again. So within Figma, we can go into the text panel and then add a style. So we call this display. Title, label, and last, body. Great. So in the next portion of the lab, we'll be going through more application. So here we can see We've already applied some styles and even changed up the use of the typeface we're using to another verbal font to explore more. Now that your type scale is set up, we can start implementation in your UI. Keep in mind the expressive capabilities of variable fonts and how they can be used to improve readability. If you've already set up your Figma styles, you can apply those and tweak the font axes to get things just right. Here's an example showing how the type scale can be implemented. The first card shows you a plan description and category tags. Below that, we have care instructions in their own containers. Since the plant name is high emphasis, it can use the headline style. The care cards also have a title but are lower emphasis, so they can use the title styles. The plant details and instructions can be assigned to body large, and the category tags can use the label large style. Based on the importance of each piece of content in your own hierarchy, you can keep experimenting with the different rules, adjusting your UI and the type scale until you find the right balance. To get started with implementation, we'll just be using basic HTML and CSS without MWC or any other framework. Implementing variable fonts this way is similar to implementing any web font using a font delivery service. Of course, Google Fonts will make things easy for us. We can even explore which variable fonts are available by selecting show only variable fonts right underneath the search bar and different variable fonts will have different axes to customize. Currently, weight, width, slant, italic, and optical size are the most common. These axes are meant to be controlled by basic CSS font properties 
as they existed before variable fonts, but at the time of this recording, not all of them are widely supported yet. To get started, we'll bring the starter code from the design lab into your IDE of choice. It's the sample card UI that we just looked at a second ago. Back in Google Fonts, we'll navigate to the family that we've chosen and set the sliders to match the styles that we made in Figma before. We'll then hit select this style for each, and then we'll bring it up in this panel on the right side. Under this panel, look for use on the web, and then we'll copy the import code into our code underneath the imports comment here. Since we're only using flex, we can also use the CSS rules to specify families code from the Google Fonts interface and put it right underneath the code that we just added. You can also use axes ranges here versus fixed values to sample from a continuous range of styles. You can make a range by joining numbers with two dots. So for example, here I've done 100 dot dot 700. Make sure that you're adding ranges that exist in the font or else they won't load properly. And also keep in mind that ranges like this are best used for smooth animations, transitions, and other experiments in the browser. This also makes the font heavier, increasing the download request. Now that the font is imported, we can go back to Figma and start looking at some properties that we can copy in. Starting with the headline style selected, you can hit inspect at the right side panel here. Scroll down under code where you have some code that's good for dev handoff. Make sure that CSS is selected here. The standard attributes for variable fonts, if you're using them, are listed as font weight, font stretch, font style, and font optical sizing. And if you're using any non-registered custom axes, they'll be contained in a separate section called font variation settings. But try to stick to the standard attributes first. From here, it's pretty simple. You can copy the CSS code, and we'll start with the H1, and just copy those styles right underneath that. And you can do the same for your H2 body styles and label classes as well. It's as easy as that. Now you've learned how to use variable fonts in your designs and implement them for the web. Head over to material.io and check out the new Material 3 type guidelines. Explore variable fonts at fonts.google.com. And of course, jump in and apply to your own designs for more expressive typography. Thanks, y'all.